Is that just bait or is that bait getting eaten? This is gonna get sloppier before it gets harder. The sand's right there. Stay on there, Shoe. There we go, a bit of sand. Check your drags. There's a stingray coming down, I can see. Oh, well, we got out here, we're on water. Start fanning some casts. Yeah, it's a big stingray over there, cruising around. I'll get onto a bit of dry sand out here soon, I'll do an intro. We're just doing a bit of land-based fishing. Just local stuff, chasing a few flathead. Just starting out with that dial hyper, 1.5 to 3 quarter ounce jig head, 3 inch gold shrimp. 10 pound day braid, 12 pound snow leopard leader. Confidence bait. Fishing a new spot, I haven't fished here before. Might as well throw what I'm confident with. I'll be surprised if we can't get a couple flat out here. I'm keen to push out because I'll be able to fish this stuff I've just come past on the way back because this tide's going to turn soon. It will force me out of here. Seems a bit muddy, a bit muddy getting over here. Looks like if I go up this bit of sand and there's a bit of sand comes back across to that one. Probably slightly deep through here. Look at this stingray. He's big. Tell you what, the old water's pretty cool. It's actually freezing. <laughs> My feet are going numb. Take a mental note of a snag on the bank too, so that once I see it go under, I know she's come up a foot and it's time to get out of here. Oh no, that's a snag. All right, we'll do an intro. We've got a bit of dry ground. G'day guys, Liam Fitzpatrick here. Today I'm doing another land base session. I'm just, you know, between boats, so trying to figure out spots so I can fish land base. And it's been pretty good so far. Like, I'm doing nothing special. Jumping on Google, finding access points, and just hitting them. Today I'm down in Jacob's Well. A couple of spots I've identified that I can probably fish quickly. I've got a few hours between dropping kids off to school and picking them up. I'm just hitting some sand flats here. I've got the last of the run out tide and then, yeah, a bit of incoming. So I figured I'd hit this stuff that I can wade across and access while the tide's out. And yeah, the wind's going to pick up soon and the next week's windy and terrible. So I figured I'd better get out for, for another session. But, yeah, there's a heap of flats here. Heap of water. Just gonna try and get some flathead. Bit of a drain there. Oh, good little ambush point for a flathead to sit in.
Yep. Classic. Absolute classic. Oh, is he all right? Dude, I think he's all right. Right in the mouth of that drain. Classic flathead. He's got me at a stalemate. This might be a big fish. Dude, he's doing nothing. I backed that drag off because he went to run and shake his head crazy. He's gonna go again. I might get a look at him here. Oh, it is a good flathead. Yeah, it's good flathead. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sometimes the light rods are pretty light. Now, I'm not going to horse this fish. This is just all sandy, muddy, shallow. There's no need to rush this fish. As soon as he wakes up, he shakes his head and carries on. That's when he's either going to chew through the line or throw that hook. He just sitting on the bottom. <laughs> like he dead set just stops. I'd rather him swimming because that way he's using up energy. Just on that gulp shrimp. It's not big, big. I thought he's a lot bigger. They've just been real fat of late. He's just got weight and he just sits on the bottom. Oh, don't do that. Back that off a little more, man. I don't want him to rub through. Running that 12 pound snow leopard leader hasn't let me down so far. I always get a little bit of damage. Every fish chews it up a little bit, especially a bigger fish. He's not that big at all, man. But he's not giving up. I thought this fish was much larger than this. He's just got some fight in him. Just got the weight, like I was saying. Just a fat, healthy fish. Wow. That's solid, man. That's a solid, fat fish. This thing comes in handy. Clip it onto myself. Clip grips lock on. Just get some water back in that fish's gills. Throw him on the mat. Film him quickly. Get it back. Yeah, just a fat fish, man. Had that weight to throw around. And that is a fat 57. Very fat. Here we go. How's that for a flathead? New spot, a couple casts. Did my intro and spotted that drain behind me and went, yep, classic flathead spot. We'll get a cast in there. Two casts. This big girl ate it. Not huge as far as length of flathead go, but it's just girthy, man. <laughs> it's just a fat fish. Just ate that three inch gulp shrimp, quarter ounce head. And you can see a little bit of damage on that leader, but it's held up again. That's a great start. I'll take that any day. All right, 
I'll get it back, keep going. Hey, what a good start that was, man. That's awesome. Happy with that. Check that leader. Bit of damage there, up an inch or so. Tag in the pocket. that double clinch knot around twice back through the loop you've made back through the new loop you've made twice draw it tight and we're back let's get another one slightly shaken <laughs> it's good fun man how good is it how weird fish put a few more in this uh, I'll put one more in the drain Maybe that was a big male, there's even a bigger female sitting in there. I doubt it, but... That was a good hook set too, corner of the mouth. But it's those head shakes when that fish is rolling around and shaking that that line passes back over those teeth. Across the mouth, so... Oh, no way. Ha <laughs> ha! No way. I think she was the bigger girl, and that's a little male been sitting with her. He's given up. He's rolled over. There he is. Now he's tail wrapped. What are you doing, buddy? He just laid on top of that. Wrapped himself up in it. Don't damage my leader. Oh, he got it in the mouth. Just a little guy. That's typically what happens. You'll get a bigger female sitting there with a few males, especially coming into springtime now. It's the right time of year for it to start to happen. Well, it's still winter, but I know it seems like they're all doing it early. It's a nice little fish though. It's two. I'll take that. So what I've got is this little passage here. That tide turn's gonna come in. I'm probably gonna hit this end. Could possibly throw a few back in that little creek, but the next main sort of zone I'm seeing is this little, it's not really a creek, it's just a passage between the sandbars here on a low tide. I'll get up there, I'll pepper it, so I can always just throw and walk on my way back. Let's see how far we can get, this might get muddy up here. That tide's definitely coming in, man. Now I'm feeling pressed for time. Oh, I saw a flathead line there. It's gonna be harder to see my stick from down here. It's not bad at the moment, man, but that wind is meant to get up and then it just gets worse and worse over the next five, six, seven days. It's the calm before the storm right now. I've got a couple of backup spots I've sort of pinpointed that I want to get to, but it's all going to be tide dependent now. The idea is to try and get to spots that most people, you know, can't just drive their car to. There's a couple of main spots I wouldn't mind having a flick at, but I'd prefer these little harder to get to places. Whoa. Super shallow there. Try and find the drop off. 
super shallow. I'm saying that they're not in it, but I can't even hop my lure. It's just bouncing off the little undulations in the, in the bottom. Oh, there's a flat head lie. It's an old one. Oh, that's a shovel nose. Shovel nose ray. This is what you want to see though. No footprints in front here. Boost your confidence levels, that's for sure. I hate being rushed. Rushed for time, because I've got to get back and get the kids from school. I'm now rushed by the tide to try and fish this as quick and efficiently as possible. If I don't get much out here in the next 10 minutes, I might go back to the other side of this island, hit that little skinny creek. Might be a few more just sitting through there, not just hanging at the drain, but just in that little bit of backwater. Oh. Oh, there's a flathead lie. That's a flathead lie on the edge there, 100% that one. I'll show you that when I get up to it. It's always something I, I love doing, walking the flats, because there's always little signs. You're either spooking fish or you're seeing where they've been. Typically it's shallow, clean water, so there's always something to see. See the bait cruising around. You can see those stingrays before you walk on them. And see, here's this flathead line in front of me here. He's only like a 45, but it's a flathead. Always Make sure your drag's right. You want it tight enough to set the hook. You go to strike at a fish and you've got a loose drag and you go to set a hook and go Zzz, and drag concedes, that hook isn't penetrating. Especially if it's just biting down, holding onto it. If that hook's not moving, it's not getting sent home. So yeah, tight enough to get a good hook set. Then you can back it off, play with it depending on how big the fish is or what it's trying to do. Typically with flooded, I just back it off a few clicks straight away. Once I know that hook's in. Yeah, different story with jacks or something like that that are trying to put you straight around a pole. Oh, it's a toady or something. Puff of fish. Blowfish, a few people overseas, same sort of thing. Uh, I reckon we go around, we'll try that little creek around the back. Another one sitting there. They're here. Too many decisions to make, not enough time. Uh, my log's half under down there, so probably got another 20 minutes half -er. Let's try a little drop off on the other side of this creek. Yeah, nah, let's head back along. I'll try that drain again. Sometimes flathead are very silly. It's not that I need to catch that girl again. It would just be interesting to see if she stages back up in there and if she's silly enough to eat the same bait again. She might stage up different on an incoming too, like push up into that creek, just at the bottom of the tide comes and sits in the mouth of it. One more. Uh, 
Now we've got to follow that sandbar down and then come out where we came in. And it's already a lot deeper than it was. Oh, that wasn't too bad. We probably could have stayed a bit longer. This is going to get sloppier before it gets harder.